everybody, I'm Rebecca Drummond, one of the co-directors, and I am here to welcome you to the Victoria Action Theatre Society's production of Fidea. Very exciting. So I'm so glad that you could all could be here and see what we've done in the past few months. Um, just a few housekeeping things. Um, if there is an emergency, we do have exits down the front and at the back where you came in. And also make sure that you are distanced from people who are not within your bubble just for COVID reasons. And also make sure that your phones are turned off in preparation for the performance. So thank you and I hope you enjoy. I wish the hull of the Argo had not sailed through the dark clashing rocks to the land of Colchis. I wish the severed pine had never fallen in the wooded vales of Mount Pelion to furnish oars for the hands of those heroes who quested after the golden fleece for Peleus. Then my mistress Medea would not have sailed from the towers of Yolkis land, her heart stricken with love for Jason. Nor would she have persuaded the daughters of Peleus to kill their father. Nor would she reside in this, the land of Corinth, with her husband and children. When she arrived in her exile, she'd borne everything by Jason's side. This pleased the men of this land, where they value a woman who doesn't argue with her husband. But now their great love has sickened to a bitter hatred. Jason has betrayed his children and my mistress wedded and bedded in a royal marriage. He's married the daughter of Creon, the king of this land. So now, poor Medea has been dishonored. She laments the oaths he made to her, invokes the solemn vows of their right hands, and calls the gods to witness. This is how Jason repays her. Ever since she heard, she just lies there, not eating, surrendering her body to grief, wasting away constantly in tears. Advice glances off her as if she were a stone or a wave at sea. She only lifts her pale face to mourn her dear father, her country and her home, that she betrayed and abandoned for the man who has now dishonored her. Misfortune has taught the poor woman what it is to be separated from one's homeland. She even loathes her children and hates to see them. I fear she may be planning something. Her heart is violent and she cannot handle suffering well. I know her and I am afraid she will go silently into the house where the marriage bed is laid and drive a sharpened sword through her own side, or else kill the princess and the bridegroom. Then she would fall victim to an even greater misfortune. But she's a dangerous woman. Anyone who crosses her will struggle to emerge as the victor. Ah, here come the children. Finish playing, I see. Oh, they spare no thought at all for their mother's suffering. Young minds find sadness difficult to grasp. Has the poor woman not stopped crying yet? I wish I were as clueless as you. The crying has only just begun. She it's has not even halfway over. She has no idea. Poor fool. If I dare say that about my mistress. What is it? Old man out with Oh, it's nothing. I'm sorry I said anything. <clears throat> Please, by the gods, entrust the secret to me. When I was nearing the place where the old men sit playing backgammon, near Pallini's sacred waters, I heard someone say, they didn't know I was listening, that Creon is planning to exile Medea from Corinth and the rest of the kingdom. But I, indeed, I don't know if this story is true. I hope it isn't. But Jason really let the children suffer just because he's had a disagreement with their mother? Well. Out with the old, in with the new, I suppose. That man is no friend of this house. Oh. 
saying. Let the crowd tell their jokes. But let any woman who elopes with a foreign husband go to the silent shades. I am lost. The wedding hymn strikes my ear. I can scarcely believe such an evil. How could Jason do this? How could he be so selfish as to leave me here alone in a foreign land with my father, country, and kingdom lost to me? Keep those two to themselves as much as you can. Do not let them come near their mother when she's so upset. Go on, inside, right now. I heard a voice. I heard the cries of the unhappy woman of Colchis. Has she not yet calmed down? Please, a woman, tell us. We heard her weeping in the house of the double doors. There is no more house. It is already gone. For a kingly marriage bed occupies my master, while my mistress pines her life away, her heart finding no comfort in the words of her friends. No, oh, Zeus, may your heavenly fire come down upon my head. What do I have to gain by living? Oh, may I find my rest in death forsaking this hateful life. O oh, Zeus, O oh, Gaia, O oh, Light, do you hear the cry of the spurned wife? What desire can you have for that monstrous lair? Silly woman, will you hasten death's final end? No, don't pray for this. Even if your husband devotes himself to a new wife's bed, do not sharpen the sword for it. Zeus himself will be your advocate. Do not pine away excessively, bewailing him. Women of Corinth, these problems that have fallen upon me without warning broken my heart. My life is over and I have lost all happiness. I know now that my husband, who was once everything to me, has become the most evil of men. And we women of all living, breathing things are by far the most pitiful. First, we must get a husband at an excess price. Then, we must take him as master of our body. And this misery causes yet more pain. So this proves to be an enormous task, to get either a good, or evil husband. Divorce is no respectable option for a woman, yet neither is refusing a single man. And once she's entered into a house of new rules and customs, she must become a prophet to learn her way around the man whose bed she'll share. What she has learned at home will not help her. And only if, after working ourselves to death, we manage to live in harmony with our husband without suffering violence, is our life honorable. Unless, of course, we die first. <laughs> but our husband? But even he gets bored of his family, turns his distressed mind away from the home, yet we are permitted to look at him and him alone. And they say we live a sheltered life in our home while they're out on campaign with their spears. But they are entirely wrong. I would sooner stand behind a shield in battle three times than give birth once. Yes. <laughs> we do not share the same story. You have a city, your father's home, an enjoyable life in the company of your friends. I am alone and stateless. I am abused by my husband, carried off as a prize from a barbarian land, with no mother, no brother, and no relatives to shelter me from my misery. So I will ask this of you. If I find a way to make my husband pay for what he's done, along with his new wife and her father, say nothing of it. Stay silent. I will do this, since you are right to take vengeance on your husband, Medea. I'm not surprised that you grieve over what has happened. I, oh, wait. I see Creon, lord of this land. Clearly, he has some new plan. Whose step do I hear on the royal threshold? It is Creon himself, swollen with empire. Medea, as king of Corinth, I command you leave this country as an exile and take your children with you. I will not return home until I have cast you out of my land. Why have you not yet conveyed yourself from my kingdom? Which crime or fault of mine are you punishing with banishment? Which? That's not what an innocent woman would say. I'm afraid, I won't hold back from saying this, that you may do some irreparable harm to my daughter 
This fear is not unfounded. You are naturally clever, skilled in many evil crafts, and you're in pain, robbed as you are of your husband's bed. It's be better for me to weather your hatred now than be soft with you and regret it later. So you fear me? What awful thing do you think will happen to you? It is not in my nature to do harm to powerful men. Besides, what have you done to me? You gave your daughter to whom your heart desired. I hate my husband, but I think you have been sensible. I do not feel bitterness towards your prosperity. Give her in marriage, and may you have good fortune. But let me live on in this land. Even though I've been treated unfairly, I will stay silent, defeated by my betters. Your words are sweet, but I fear you may be planning something evil. I trust you less than I did before. A short-tempered woman, just like a short-tempered man, is easier to guard against than one who is silently cunning. So go, give no more speeches. This is set in stone. There is no way for you to stay among us since you are hostile towards me. Please don't, by your newly married daughter. Go. Your words are wasted. May Zeus, who is responsible for her suffering, not go unpunished. Get out, all of you foul woman, and take my sufferings with you. I am suffering already. I have no need for yours, for I am as overwhelmed by my loss as you hoped. Alone. A beggar, expelled, deserted, and downtrodden in every way. Once I was supported by my noble father. Once I traced my renowned lineage to the sun. I saved Jason, that talent and honor, renowned flower of the Greeks, savior of the Achaeans, and offspring of the gods. Jason can defend his own case if you remove your own from his. No blood has stained his innocence. His hand is kept from the sword, and he has stood far from you untainted. You creator of wicked deeds, go, purge yourself from my kingdom. Take your poisons with you. Excuse me, gentlemen. This woman has got me in such an anger. Settle my people, settle in another land, free my people from fear, and go bother the gods elsewhere. I give you one last thing as I leave. Do not allow the guilt of a mother to bear down upon her innocent sons. Have compassion for them. You are a father yourself. It is natural for you to show them kindness. I do not care about my own circumstances, about going into exile. So I weep at the thought of their plight. Go. I will take them into my care as a father. I beg of you, allow me to delay my exile briefly. As a mother, to give her sons their last kisses, perhaps as she takes her last breath. And you are seeking time for treachery. You will deny a poor woman her time for tears. Fine. If you must stay, stay for one day. But I say this publicly to you now. If the next dawn comes and finds you within the borders of this kingdom, you will die. I am serious. So stay for one day. You won't have time to do the terrible things I fear. <clears throat> the sacred marriage calls me, the festival of Hymen calls me to prayer. Oh, the streams of holy rivers flow backwards and justice is turned on its head, as is everything else. The plans of men are treacherous and they no longer abide by their oaths to the gods. Rumors will be turned around so that a woman's life is seen as respectable. Honor is coming to all women and we won't again be the subject of slander. The lyrics of ancient songs will stop telling stories of our fickleness. You, Medea, sailed from your father's home, your heart mad with love. Now you live in a foreign land, you have no husband, and have lost your marriage bed, poor woman. You must leave this land as an exile. Those oaths are gone, and with them the gratitude shown to you. There is no shame still here in mighty Greece. It has flown away into the sky. Pissable woman. 
You do not have a father's house in which to take refuge from hardship. And a princess of a higher status than you has been set up in your husband's home as his new wife. What has happened is terrible. Who could say otherwise? But it is not what you think. Don't even imagine it. Do you really think I would flatter that man if I didn't gain some advantage? This one has reached such a level of idiocy that although he could have stopped me by banishing me from his land, he allowed me to stay this one day on which I will turn three of my enemies into corpses. Creon and his daughter and my husband. Great bombs cannot stay hidden. They demand reckoning. By the goddess I worship most of all and choose as my accomplice. Hecate, who lives in the innermost heart of my home, none of them will cause pain to my heart and enjoy it. They will tell the tales of my marriage and my divorce. How do you leave your husband? The same way you got him. I will make their marriage bitter and disastrous. A bitter marriage in return for my exile from this land. Oh, go on then, Medea. Spear none of the skills that you're an expert in while you plot and make your preparations. Go on into the danger. It's a contest of spirit now. I am uncertain. Off kilter. My furious mind takes me to strange places. Where shall I find vengeance? If any crime comes to mind of which the Greeks, the foreign cities, or your own hands are ignorant of, you must now prepare it. Yes, let your past crimes urge you on, let them all rush back into your mind. The Golden Fleece, celebrated treasure of the kingdom stolen, and my brother, slashed apart by a sharp sword, his funeral thrown in my father's face, his corpse scattered in the sea. Limbs of old man Peleus, Boiled away in a bronze cauldron. Deadly wickedness. How often did I spill blood? But I did none of it out of hate. I did it all for a savage, raging love. Now, there are many deadly paths I could take to kill them. And I'm not sure which way I should try first, friends. Should I set fire to the bridal chamber, or sneak into the house, to the marriage bed, and stab a sharp sword through their stomach? There is one problem with this. If I am caught scheming and going into the house, I will be killed, and my enemies will laugh at me. No. It is best to take the most direct path, in which I am naturally the most skilled. To vanquish them with sorcery. Let this be so. Bring death to his father-in-law, death to his new bride, death to the whole royal line, and death to. Is there anything worse? What evil shall I call down upon the groom? Let him live. Yes. Let him live. As he was mine, my Jason. If not, let him live still remembering me. May he wander through foreign cities, a trembling, destitute exile, without household gods. Out. Medea, what are you thinking? No hope shows a way out of these sorrows. She who has nothing to hope for despairs at nothing. The Colchians have abandoned you, your husband broke his vows, and nothing remains of your great wealth. Medea remains here. Behold the sea, the earth, iron, fire, the gods and the thunderbolts. You should fear the king. My father was a king. But did. I long for it. You must run away. I have regretted it before. Medea. I will become a Medea. But you're a mother. Yes, of his children. Don't you want to escape? I will escape, but first I will have my revenge. A fury will pursue you. Perhaps I'll find a way to slow them down. Stop now. Curb your threats and your passions. Now is not the time. Fate can destroy wealth, but not spirit. No power of flame, no force of swelling wind, and no frightening violence of a whirling spare compares to the burning hatred of a wife denied her marriage. 
when the misty south wind brings winter storms and the rushing Danube quickens, forbidding the joining of bridges, flooding its banks, or when the road drives into the deep, or when with snows loosened by the powerful mid-spring sun, Mount Hymus dissolves into spring, blind as the fire kindled by anger, and it does not care for a ruler, or suffer restraint, or fear death, it longs to go into the face of war itself. Mercy, gods! We beseech your pardon so that he who overcame the sea may live in safety. But the lord of the deep rages at the conquest of his kingdom. The familiar path costs no one greatly. Walk where it was safe before, and break not with wicked violence the inviolable pact of the world. Whoever touched the famous oars of that audacious ship, the Argo, and stripped Mount Pelion of the dim shade of its sacred wood, whoever entered the wandering cliffs, and having traversed so many hardships at sea, moored a line upon a barbarian coast to return as plunderer of exotic gold atoned with dreadful death for defiling the laws of the sea. Mm -hmm. The sea demands punishment for provocation. Even Peleas, who ordered the prophet, and the golden foil to be brought back on the first ship, burned, drifting through shallow water. Oh, no! Gods, you have avenged the sea. Spare one who was commanded. This is not the first time that I've seen one of the possible evil of savage emperors. <laughs> For although you could have kept this house by dutifully suffering the plans of your superiors, you will be exiled because of your foolish talk. Not that I care. Keep calling Jason the worst man on earth. But when you speak against the ruling family, consider yourself lucky that exile is your punishment. I have always tried to soften the natural temper of the king, and I wanted you to stay. But you would not stop your stupidity, and you kept speaking ill of the ruling house. For that, you will be exiled. Indeed. We have fled Jason, and we are fleeing still. The cause of our flight is not new. Moving house is new. The cause of our flight is new. I have always fled for you. I go, I leave, because you force me to flee your own house. You send me back. Where should I make for Phasis and for Colchis, my father's kingdoms, fields drenched in my brother's blood? The paths I opened for you, I closed for me. So you send me back. Where? You impose exile on an exile, but do not grant it. When you were sent to yoke the fire-breathing bulls, and sow the fields of death, I saved your life, and every Greek on board that ship, the Argo, can confirm it. And I killed the dragon that guarded the golden fleece, and kept watch sleeplessly with its tangled coils, and raised the light which rescued you from death. My own accord, I left my father's home and followed you with more love than sense. I killed Peleus. He died the most horrible of deaths at the hands of his own daughters. And after I did all of this to help you, most evil man, you have betrayed me and taken for yourself some new marriage bed. Ugh. So now where must I turn? To my father's home, which I betrayed for you like I betrayed my country by coming here? Or to the daughters of Peleus in their grief. I'm sure they would give me a beautiful reception after killing their father. It seems that I must prove myself an eloquent speaker. Mm -hmm. And just like the careful helmsman of a ship, I must batten down the hatches against your tongue lashing woman. Though you so exaggerate your favors to me, I believe that it was Aphrodite alone, of gods and mortals, who was the savior of my voyage. Yes. <laughs> you have a sharp mind, but to speak as if Eros compelled you with his inescapable bow incites the gods' ill will against me. <laughs> but I won't put too fine a point in it, since you have certainly helped me in the past. However, by saving me, you certainly got more than you gave, as I will show. Firstly, you live in a Greek land exactly. rather than that of barbarians. And so you understand justice and laws, and you know the grace not to use force. All the Greeks perceive you as wise, and your reputation precedes you wherever you go. But if you lived at the furthest edge of the world, 
there would be no stories point of view. Now, in regards to my royal marriage, which you denigrate, I will first show that in this matter I have been wise and prudent, and then that I have been a great friend to you and my children. Oh, shut up! When I arrived here from the land of Iolcus, dragging many impossible misfortunes, what luckier find could I have made as an exile than the king's daughter for a bride? Yes. And no, it's not what breaks you, that I hated your bed, that I have been struck with desire for a new bride. <laughs> I'm not interested in the baby-making contest that I've <laughs> The children I have are sufficient, and I make no complaint. But rather it's so that, and this is my greatest point, we might live well and want for nothing. I know that awfully the path of a poor man, even a friend. What I mean is that I did it so that I could rear sons worthy of my house, and so brothers to your children. I wish to put them on the same footing and join together our houses so that we might be well off. What use do you have for sons? It profits me that my future children will benefit those alive now. Surely that's not a bad idea. You would not argue if you didn't wrangle at the marriage bed. You know, you women have come to believe that if things are right in bed, you have everything. <laughs> but if any misfortune happens in that realm, you make up the best and most beautiful things as hateful. There must be another way for morsels to beget children without the female race. For then, mankind would have no problems. Yes, yes. Jason, that was a good speech. However, I will say this. I think you are wrong to abandon your wife. Yes, yeah, that's you. Exactly. If you weren't such a coward, you would have talked this marriage over with me first. Yeah. Instead of doing it without a word to your loved ones. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Right, obviously. If I just talked to you about the marriage, you would have been fully supportive. You, who can't even bear to let go of your anger now. Exactly. <laughs> you didn't tell me. You thought having a barbarian for a wife was dishonorable for you. Yeah. Okay. Please understand. I didn't marry her because of her, but because I wanted to keep you safe and have royal sons as brothers for my children for the protection of my house. I've said that already. Oh, you are safe here. I must go into exile alone. Exactly. That was your own fault. Don't blame anyone else. What have I done? Did I remarry and abandon you? You cursed the royal family in public. Exactly. Yes. yes. And I'll be a curse to your house too. You yes. Yes. I'm not going to argue with you anymore. However, if you do want to take some of my money to help yourself in exile, just say so. I'll give you as much as you want with open hands, and I'll let my foreign friends know about your situation. They'll treat you well as their guest. It would be foolish of you to refuse this woman. You'll be much better off if you just stop being angry. <laughs> I wouldn't accept anything from you. Are oh, your friends, so don't even try. Gifts from worthless men are worthless themselves. <laughs> well, I call on the gods to witness that I'm willing to help you and the children in every way, but that you aren't grateful for these gifts and you stubbornly push your friends away. Yes. Oh, fuck off! They'll obviously be overwhelmed with desire for your new bride since you've been away from your house for so long. Oh, and be the bridegroom. Start thinking rationally. Speak calmly. My father-in-law's house can make exile a comfort. Just ask. My mind despises kingly wealth. Just let my children come with me into exile. In their hearts I may pour my tears. Your sons await you. I confess I want to obey your request, but father who love forbids it. Then not even my king and father-in-law could make me undergo it. My sons are my reason for life. They are a solace for our hearts burning cares. I could sooner lack breath, limbs, light. He loves his sons that much. Good. He is trapped. His wounds lie open. 
Let me speak some final instructions to them as I go. Let me give them a final embrace. Thank you. And now I ask one more thing, that you do not allow words caused by my chaotic suffering to linger in your mind. Let the memory of my better self stay with you. Erase these angry words. I have banished them all from my mind. And please, rule your fiery temper and calm your mind. Rest softens misery. No city and no friends will pity you, Medea. You who have suffered the worst thing that can be suffered. May whoever can open his hearts to his friends and then abandon them die hated. He will never be my friend. Medea, the warmest of hellos to you. How do you do, King Medeus? Where have you come from? Why are you here? I've come from the ancient oracle of Delphi. The greatest oracle in the whole world. Why did you go there? Well, I went to find out how I could have children. By the gods! Have you been childless for your whole life? Yeah, I'm childless. Some god has done this to me. Do you have a wife, or have you never been married? I have a wife who, you know, shares my bed. And what did Apollo say to you about having children? Words too complicated for men to understand. Can you tell me what the oracle said? Oh, why not? I mean, actually, after all, it does require someone wise to interpret it. Tell me what was said then, since I am allowed to hear it. Well, he told me <clears throat> not to untie the preeminent foot of the wineskin. That's a man. Will you do what or arrive where? Till I return to my ancestral hearth. Why did you come here then, to Corinth? Oh, well, there's this guy, Pythaeus, the king of Troyzen, and I wanted to discuss the prophecy with him. Well then, may you have good luck and get what you want. Wait, Medea, what's, what's wrong? Why are you crying? Aegeus, my husband is the worst of all men. What do you mean? Jason has betrayed me. Even though I've done nothing to him, he's made a new woman mistress of his house instead of me. No. Surely he wouldn't dare do something as shameful as that. He really has. He loved me before, but now I am utterly dishonored. But, but why? Did he want someone else? He desired to marry the daughter of a king. King? Who gave his daughter to him? Tell me everything. King Creon, who rules here in Corinth. Ah, well, in that case, my dad, you certainly do have reason to be distressed. I am ruined. What's more, I am being exiled from this land. By whom? This just keeps getting worse. Creon. And Jason? What's he doing? Just letting it happen? I don't respect that! He says he is not, but really he is entirely in favor of it. Have pity. Please take pity on a hopeless woman. Don't watch me be cast out on my own. Never. Instead, take me into your land and home, and by doing this, may your desire to have children be fulfilled so you may die happy. I will stop. I will put a stop to your childlessness and help you to have children. Uh, I, 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 I have a wife. <laughs> I know what concoctions can do this. Oh, well, in that case, my dear woman, there are several reasons why I am eager to do this. Firstly, for the gods, but secondly, for the children you say that I'll have. Because, well, I'm entirely helpless in that matter. That's fine, then. If you would just swear this to me, I really would have everything I could ever want from you. Don't you trust me? What's the problem? I trust you, but Creon hates me. If you have sworn this by the gods, you will not betray me. But if you have only agreed to this in words instead of swearing by all the gods, you may become their friend and concede to their demands. I am weak, and they are wealthy and come from royal houses. Right. Well, you've shown a great deal of foresight in your speech, Medea. So, okay, look, 
I won't deny you this, if that's what you want. In fact, this way it's even safer for me. I can justify myself to your enemies, show that your case is morally right. Yes, name the gods. Swear by the earth, by my grandfather Helios, and by the whole race of gods put together. Swear that you will never banish me from your land, and that if any of my enemies come and try and take me away, you will never willingly give me up for as long as you may live. I swear by the earth, the holy light of Helios, and all the gods to do as you have said. Good. And what punishment will you face if you betray me? The punishment given to the greatest sinners. All's good then. Go with happiness. I will come to your city as soon as I can. When I've done what I plan and gotten what I want. May Hermes, Lord of Travellers, bring you to your home. And may you accomplish what your heart desires, since you're a good man in my eyes, Aegeus. O oh, Zeus, God of justice, O oh, light of Helios, now I will be victorious over my enemies. I've started on the path. Now I know they will pay the price for what they've done to me. I just, when I was utterly distraught, Aegeus appeared as a safe harbour and saved my plans. I will anchor my ship with him when I go to the city of Athena. Oh, you. My faithful nurse, ally in my grief and changing fortune, aid in my anguished plans. Send for Jason and beg for him to come and see me. When he arrives, I'll speak soft words to him and say that I agree with him and that he's doing what's best by abandoning me for this royal marriage, that I realize this is truly advantageous. Then. I will ask that he take the children to see his new wife with gifts, an exquisite gown and a crown of beaten gold. If she takes this finery and puts it on, she will die a gruesome death, and so will anyone who touches her. I will smear the gifts with poisons that can do this. Now, Hecate, prepare death rites. Build an altar. Let the whole house now scream with fire. My mind trembles and shivers with dread. The great disaster is at hand. It is inhuman how her anguish increases, how it inflames itself and renews its past potency. I have often seen her raving, approaching the gods and bringing down the heavens. Indeed. As soon as she has escaped with day's steps and reached her innermost mournful place, she pours out all her resources and brings forth everything that even Medea herself has long feared. Then arcane, mysterious, concealed, she unfolds a whole crowd of evils, praying to the gloomy shrine with her left hand. She calls the plagues created in the desert of burning Libya, and those the Torian range confines in perpetual snow, frozen by arctic cold, drawn out by her soul. A scaly throng attends, deserting their lairs. Here, a savage serpent trails its immense body, reaches out its triple forked tongue, and bearing death seeks out its victims. Hearing her song, it is dazed. It rolls its swollen body into a mound of knots and collects into coils. The weapons and evils which earth below creates are small and worthless. I ask for poisons from heaven. It is time to undertake something higher than common fraud. Ophiacus, celestial snake charmer, must release his pressed hands and let the venom pour out. Python, who dared challenge the twin divinities, must arrive at my song and every serpent head of the Hydra cut off by Hercules' hand, must return, repairing itself with its own blood. After she has summoned the whole of serpent kind, she collects the poisons of inauspicious plants. Whatever the earth creates in nest-building spring, or when the frozen winter solstice has dispersed the beauty of the woods and fettered everything in snowy frost, every herb that sprouts with deadly flowers or fearful sap, 
and yields causes of harm in its twisted roots. She lays hold of. She harvests the deadly grasses and squeezes the fluids from the snakes. She mixes in disgusting birds, the heart of a mournful horned owl, and the entrails cut out of a living screech owl. The artificer of evil deeds places these things separately. Here is the greedy essence of fire, and here is the chilly ice of numbing froth. To that potion she adds words no less dreadful. Listen, the sound of her frenzied steps and chanting. The world shudders at her words. I invoke the silent ones and their gods. Blind chaos, abyssal home of death. Fatal caves, filthy, ringed with rivers. Was the punishment, souls? You've been invited to a wedding. Get Ixion, butcher of Immors, back on his feet. Tantalus, too, shall drink in Corinth. But Sisyphus, blood of Creon, stays. Let the rock grind him into gravel. Now, Hecate, Hecate gleam of the, the night, answer me. Come, bear your teeth with all three faces. Fear, I unleashed my hair. I barefoot stalked the hidden groves and conjured wet from dry. I sank seas and conquered tides and turned the ocean inside out. I blended the sky. The world saw stars and sun together. Constellations fell into the waves. I upset the order of the seasons. Spring bloomed in summer at my song. And I made Ceres watch her harvest die in winter. Floods and storms boomed and roared. Without wind, ancient groves give shade no more. Because I gave the word. Now, Hecate, my moon, your right. For you with blown my hands, garlands weaved and bound by nine snakes. For you the limbs of strifeful Typhon, who fought the rule of Jove. Blood of the traitor, the ferryman, given by dying Nessus. Await as Pyo died and left this ash, the Pyo that put Hercules out of his misery. A harpy's plumes lost in a cave, fleeing a man like the wind. Now add the deadly feathers of the Stymphalian bird, pierced by poisoned points. Shock these people with a new, perverse horror. And listen as Corinthian bronze screams in support of your name, Hecate, who snares her prey in nets. For you we present the ordained rites on blood-stained dirt. For you the torch plucked from the pious core ignites the night. Hands of mine, my blood pulls on the altar. Hands of mine grow used to drawing knives and drawing blood, however dear. I bleed and I offer the blood. Now, if I bother you, call you too often, ask too much, forgive me, I beg of you. My reason for asking for your support so often, Hecate, is eternally one and ever the same. Jason! Now you, stay in Crusa's clothes, so that the moment she puts them on, a snaking flame roasts her from inside out. A fire. Locked in bright gold, lurks in the dark. My supplier stole it from heaven, paid with his liver, but taught me to bury my strength in art. I mean, Prometheus. I control the gifts of the Chimera's core. I control the flames plucked from the fire-breathing bull. These I mixed with the spit of Medusa. These I made to harbor harm unknown. Hecate! May they trick sight and withstand touch. May they sink into her veins and organs. Melt the limbs. Smoke the bones. Torches glow for the wedding. Hair of the bride burn brighter. Now I have the power I require. Call over the children, couriers of my wedding gift so dearly bought. Here, just like you asked, even though you hate me, I'll listen to whatever it is you want now, woman. Jason, please forgive me for what I said. I thought it over and admonished myself like this. You cruel woman, why do you rage? 
garbage. Why are you hateful to those who make good plans? Why are you at odds with both the rulers of this country and your husband? Who is doing what's best for you by marrying a princess and giving your children brothers? Why are you so angry when the gods are good to you? When I thought of all this, I realized I was being very silly and growing angry for no reason. So now I praise you, and I think you are wise to accept this marriage for both our sakes. I was being irrational. I ought to help you with your plans and stand next to your marriage bed and take pleasure in looking after your bride. But we women, we are what we are. Children, children, come here out of the house. Say hello to your father and reconcile him like your mother's done. We've made a truce and put aside our anger. Come, take his right hand. Well, I applaud this woman, and I don't blame you for earlier. It's natural for a woman to be angry when her husband smuggles in another woman behind her back. <laughs> I've understood what's better, even if it took some time. That's what a smart woman would do. And as for you children, your father has thoughtfully prepared a great deal of security for you with the help of the gods. I think that you'll be the most important people in Corinth, alongside your new brothers. So, keep on growing and your father will sort out everything else with the help of some kind god. May I see you thriving young boys grow to adulthood stronger than my enemies. But you, why are you crying and why do you turn your pale cheek away? Aren't you happy? It's nothing. I was thinking about the children. Why are you crying over the children, you sad woman? <laughs> I gave birth to them. When you prayed that they would survive, I felt pity for them, wondering if this would happen. Well, cheer up. I'll make sure that everything goes well for them. Right. I'll do that. I'll trust your words. <laughs> After all, women are naturally delicate and cry easily. Now, the leaders of this land have decided to exile me, and I know that it's for the best, since I am a problem for you and the ruling family, as it's thought that I am an enemy of that house. But you'll have to beg Creon if you wish to raise the children yourself. Well, I don't know if I can convince him, but I'll try. Perhaps you could ask your wife to entreat her father. Absolutely. I, I think I could persuade her to do that. You will if she's like other women. I can help with this. I will send her gifts that are by far the most beautiful of any on earth. The children can deliver them. Then she won't be happy in just one way, but in many, since she'll have both the best of all men as her husband, and finery, which my grandfather Helios gave to me. Silly woman, why are you giving these things away? Do you think the royal family doesn't have enough gowns or gold? It's not that. Gifts can even win over the gods. Go, my children. Nothing has gone your mother's way, but you may offer these to your new stepmother as a peace offering. When you get to the palace, supplicate to your new stepmother. And then, listen carefully, make sure that she takes these gifts into her hands. Go on then, hurry back for one last time. It's unbearable to be laughed at by your enemies, my friends. I made a mistake when I left my ancestral home, won over by a Greek man's promises. With the help of the gods, he'll pay the price for what he's done to me. The finale awaits. My passion has one final crime to commit. Children, former children, you will pay the penalty for your father's crimes. Never again will he see the children he had with me alive, nor will he have new children with his new wife, since that bitch must die a horrible death from my poisons. Since you've shared this plan with me, and since I want to help you and to obey the law, I beg of you, don't do it. Is there any other way? I'll forgive you for saying that, since you haven't suffered as badly as me. But would you really kill your children? Yes, it would wound my husband the most. But you would be the most wretched of all women. Well then, that's what I'll do. In the meantime, anything you say is useless. Let no one think me weak, passive, or insignificant. 
accepted your gifts, held them in her hands. Your children will be safe. Oh. What's, what's wrong? I thought this was good news. No, no, no! What's, no. what's, what's? <laughs> Did I miss something important? <laughs> I thought this news was good. You said what you said. I do not blame the messenger. So, why so gloomy? Why do all the tears? I have no choice, old friend. The gods and me and my anxiety have fucked this whole thing up. Well, we're not alone in losing children. We're mortals. We just have to deal with it. Right. I'll deal with it. Go inside now and take care of the children. in my days of grief and pain. Never again will you look upon your mother with adoring eyes. You will enter a new phase of life. Why are you looking at me like this, darling? Why are you smiling at me for the very last time? Go inside now. Anyone who shouldn't be 
be here should go. I will not hold back. I say whoever has never known parents is happier. I say whoever has never known children is happier than any parents. They don't have to worry about the decisions they've made and so they stay carefree. But parents, with their sweet little ones, I see them flattened by worry every single day. First, with how to raise them well, to leave them a life worth living, and second, they have no idea if it was all worth it, if they've worked so hard for trouble or reward. But the worst is yet to come. Even if our children do grow up, reach adulthood and make us proud, if the gods will it, death will carry them off to Hades in an instant. Why then, on top of everything else, must the gods punish us mortals with the sharpest of pains as the price for having children? Medea! Medea! Flee with all speed! Don't refuse any escape by either land or sea! What has happened? Why should I go? Everyone's dead! The city has fallen! The ashes of parent and child lie mixed in the dust. They're dead. The king's daughter and Creon himself you did this. What? I am stunned too. I can hardly believe what we saw. Terrible things. How were they slain? Insatiable fire. <laughs> Enraged. It tore through the palace. Someone sent it. The building has collapsed. The city will be next. Fetch water for the flames. Yes. Yes, they tried that. But, and it makes no sense. The water only fueled the flame. What? The more we fought it, the hotter it burned, turning our resources against us. Fantastic news! Thank you! I will forever count you amongst my friends and supporters. The fuck? Are you sane, woman? You mutilate the royal household and then cackle at the news, fearless. I could explain, but I won't. Calm down, my friend, and tell me. How were they destroyed? I'll love it twice as much if they died screaming in agony. When your pair of children arrived with Jason in the house of this stepmother, we were delighted. We'd been ground down by your strife. The rumor was quick, whispered ear to ear, that you and Jason had reached an arrangement. The lady, the one who's now in charge instead of you, before she saw your two children, focused her gaze entirely on Jason. But then she covered her eyes and turned her cheek away, appalled at the children's entrance. So your husband intervened to soothe her rage, and he was like, What's dear to me should be dear to you, so please, accept these gifts and agree to keep my children. Please, do it for me. With that, and when she saw the gifts, she gave in, conceded to Jason. And as soon as he left with the children, she took the iridescent robe and wrapped it around her shoulders. She set the golden crown amidst her curls and sorted out her hair in the mirror, smiling at her lifeless reflection. Then she got up out of her chair and crisscrossed the room, prancing, absolutely delighted by the gifts, every so often glancing in admiration at the shape of her legs. But that's when we saw it all go wrong. She changed colour, lurched sideways, legs trembling. She barely got back to her chair before collapsing. People sped off to tell her father, her new husband, and the whole house shook with running footsteps. They wouldn't have gotten far before her eyes snapped open and yanked into consciousness. She began to shriek. The pain had just doubled, you see. The golden circlet resting atop her head erupted in a stream of all devouring fire, and the intricate rope, your children's gift, sank its teeth into her tender flesh. She leapt up and fled, on fire, flinging her head and long hair all over the place. She wanted to tear off the crown, but it would not leave Helen. Hard as she shook, the brighter the fire burned. She collapsed under the weight of the tragedy. No one but her father could have recognized her. Her eyes couldn't stay intact. Nor could her face. Blood rolled down her head, melted by fire. Her flesh fell away from the bones like tree sap, torn by the curse's invisible jaws. It was awful. Fear kept us all from the body, 
We had disaster as a teacher, but her father didn't know. <laughs> Out of the way! No! No, 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 no. Into the room, he fell upon her corpse. He groaned, embraced her, kissed her, and cried out, My poor girl, which God has so destroyed you has robbed me in my final years of you, my only child. May I die with you, my child? When he had run out of breath to wail with and tried to raise his frail body, the weave of the robe clung to him like ivy winds through laurel. The struggle was gruesome. He tried to get up onto his knees. She held him back. If he pulled too hard, he tore his own elderly flesh from his bones. Ah! It was hopeless. So at last he gave in and let go of life. He couldn't hold out any longer. Father and daughter lay dead as one. A tearful tragedy. I have nothing to say for your part in this. You'll find out yourself what you'll pay in return. I've said it before and I'll say it again. There is nothing certain about being mortal. No one is both mortal and happy. You can be luckier than another on a good day, but never truly happy. <laughs> it seems that the gods have chosen today to bury Jason in the punishment that he deserves. Friends, I have decided to do the deed at once. Kill my children and flee this land. But if I delay, I am condemning them to the death at the hands of somebody worse. But either way, they must die. And since they must, I who bore them will end them. Nothing about being a woman has gone my way. The maiden dripping with gore. Which way will she plunge her head? Gore in the grip of murderous love. She's out of her mind. What crime is she brewing? Rage blinds her, expression like stone, arrogant. She tosses and jerks her, and she doesn't care. She threatens the king. Who could think her an exile? Her face burns red one moment, ghostly white the next. Her form is unstable, no color lasts long. She, she makes us. Just that way, like a tigress pounding through the bush, stalking her lost cubs in the groves of the Ganges. Curbing rage? Curbing love? Medea! No. Now, love and rage propel her as one. What follows? When will this unspeakable Colchian step away from Grecian soil? and all his kingdoms and kings are like from fair. Now, Phoebe, my moon, send your chariot. Hold nothing back. Let nurturing night swallow the light. Let Hesperus of the evening, herald of the night, sink this day of fear. Cleopas, this is the end. Yes, by the gods. Stop her, this is it. She's closing in, trapping us. She's got a sword. Over here, sweet ones. You alone bring release to the sickened household. Come over here and hug me. Meho, your, your father can keep you safe just as long as your mother can too. But exile calls. Soon, soon, they will be dragged from my embrace, weeping, sobbing. They chase and lose their affection. I already have. My pain rises once more. Hatred bubbles to the surface. I don't want to, but the Furies want me to. Rage, where you lead, I follow. No, what's this? What's the disturbance? They raise arms against me, drive me to flight. I will ascend to the summit of the house and finish it there. You. Come along with me. Oh, 
I'll do it. I saw. Don't burn up your courage in private. Show the world how far you go! <laughs> of evils, or has she fled? She will have to burrow under the earth or soar aloft on wings into the heavens if she wants to escape royal justice. Has she deluded herself into thinking she can destroy the royal family and escape intact? But I don't care about her. I'm here for the children. She's doomed to vengeance exacted by those she robbed, but I'm going to save the lives of my children before the next of kin take action and take revenge for what Medea's done. <sighs> Looking for bodies. Looking for me who did the work. Look, it's on the roof up there. Bring some of her fire. Pitch her into her own inferno. Yeah. Oh, if it's me you're after, and you can say something. Another again will you touch me? Helios looks out for his granddaughter, you see. Provides me an escape if ever I need to flee. Throw a papaya, Jason. For your children. Build them a tomb. I already buried your wife, her father, a suitable funeral. By all that's divine and by the flight we shared, and our bed, which I at least have not betrayed. Please, spare our sons. If there's a crime, it's mine. Kill me. Take my twisted life. <laughs> oh, Jason. I'm so sorry. You don't know. Or I guess you wouldn't have said that. Why? She's not going to kill me too, is she? Your children are dead! She kills them! No, it can't be! Don't you ruin me! Your despicable woman! You're the absolute worst thing that's ever happened to the gods, to me, and to the whole human race! You, who took a sword to your own sons, you've killed the father in me, you miserable, worthless mother! You did this, and yet you still share our son and earth? You could not have committed a worse crime. But just die! I see clearly now. I was blind before. You betrayed your father and the land that raised you, but I took you in. I brought you from a foreign land into a Greek house. I married a catastrophe, and the gods took it out on me, not you. You butchered your own brother in his home. But I turned to you and said, welcome aboard the Argo. And that's how you began. And then you married me, had children, and then you killed them because I left you? There isn't a Greek woman alive who could have done this. Did I marry one of them? No, no, no. I chose to marry you. I ruined everything by choosing not a woman but a beast. Crueler than Skilla, a ravager of ships. I can't hurt you with words. You don't care what I say, do you? To leave, bloodstained and unashamed. I will warn them. There's nothing left. Not my newlywed bride and our honeymoon. Not the children that I fathered and raised, who I'll never talk to again. All gone. I could respond to that, Shrivel. But Father Zeus knows what you've done and how I made you pay. You aren't going to stain my bed with shame and then enjoy yourself laughing at my expense. Nor was the princess. And Creon was never going to escape intact. After he gave you his daughter and exiled me. As for insults, call me a beast if you like. Call me Scylla, lying in wait for ships. I struck the only blow I needed to land. You've hurt yourself too. You're a victim of your own evil. Oh, it hurts. But silencing you softens the pain. My sons, you had the worst of mothers. My children, your father's crimes destroyed you. I didn't. Fucking well kill them! No. It was your arrogance and replacement marriage! You chose to kill them? Over marriage? You think divorce means nothing to a woman? To a rational one, you overreact to everything! Well, they're gone. So I've done my part to hurt you. They're here. They'll haunt you till the end. The gods know who started this. 
They know. They know your empty heart. Hate me more. I hate your lining right back. And I hate yours. I won't miss it. Oh no, whatever will I do without you? <laughs> will you at least allow me to bury the bodies? To mourn? No. I will take them to the sanctuary of Hera at the Acrocorinth. There, I will bury them myself. That way they'll be safe. So none of my enemies can defile their final rest. Corinthians will atone for this murder forevermore, the sacred festivals and rites. I will go to the city of Athens and live with Jeeves. You, though, you will die a shit death and do a shit job of dying it. Your soul crushed by a loose bit of the Argo. I'll break up forever imprinted on your eyes. I hope the Furies get you, a lethal kind of justice. They're not listening. Not to you, an oath breaker, host, traitor. Fuck you, you polluted butcher of children. Go home and bury your wife. I'll absolutely go, missing both of my sons. Wait till you're decrepit. Then you will really miss them. My sons, you meant the world to me. Meant the world to their mother, yes, not to you. Meant so much that you killed them. By the gods, please, just let me touch them. No, you are begging in vain. Zeus, do you hear this? How I've driven out what I've suffered at the hands of this foul, child-slaughtering monster. With every bone in my body, I cry this lament. I invoke the gods. I ask that they stand by me and bear witness that you killed my sons and hold their corpses hostage. I should never been a father. Never see you take them from me. Don't you know your wife? This is how she always makes her exit. My path through the sky opens. When serpents bend their scale next to the oak, my chariot awaits. I will ride through the winds. Now I have my power back. My father. My brother, my people have their golden fleece to hold again. My kingdom has returned. I am my own woman once more. Are the possessions of Zeus on Olympus. Countless are the surprises orchestrated by the gods. The expected end never comes. The unexpected finds a way. Just as we saw today. <laughs> 